You're free now. You can go. Yes. Thank you. Um, geez, that's a hard job, isn't it? Like, imagine your job is someone comes in your office and they sit there and they look expectantly at you and say, I feel sort of empty inside. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Are you hungry? <laughs> that help? So I suppose that's why you did all that study, you know what to say. Yeah, so if anyone has any feelings of emptiness at all, um, just come up to John <laughs> at lunchtime and he'll uh, sort it out for you. We are now going to go to Victoria, Dr. Fathia Rao. He is uh, many things. He's the head of research and a psychiatrist at the clinical and also the clinical director at the Spectrum Personality Disorder Service in Victoria. He's also Deputy Chair of the Australian Borderline Personality Disorder Foundation and Senior Lecturer at the School of Psychiatry and Psychology at Monash University. He also runs training programs for psychiatrists and clinicians in the field of personality disorders and consults to the uh, to those setting up personality disorder programs. Uh, he has zero minutes off, I would assume. That's a very busy life. He's going to tell us a bit about things that are happening in Victoria. Please welcome him. Jonathan Harms and the use of his uh, for organizing this uh, wonderful conference. And I would also like to thank you for inviting me to speak about uh, the Victorian experience in caring for people <coughs> with uh, highly sensitive souls. <laughs> uh, Spectrum is a unique uh, public service in Australia, uh, being the only uh, statewide uh, specialist response for personality uh, disorders in the country. I'm hoping that uh, in the next few months or years, we will get uh, a spectrum like services in New South Wales. Yeah. Project Aid is already doing uh, some significant work uh, led by uh, Professor Ben Graham. Uh, spectrum was set up about uh, 15 years ago uh, to primarily work with uh, the Victorian uh, public mental health uh, services to help treat the most complex uh, persons with uh, HSS. The spectrum model has gathered on uh, several <coughs> transformations in the last uh, 15 years. When we started, uh, we started as a 10-minute uh, inpatient uh, facility. We soon realized that that's not a good idea, it's not really going to help our patients. And uh, we have a large brief and a very, very tiny little budget of uh, three and a half million dollars. We have about 30 staff, uh, about 10 psychologists, nurses, uh, so occupational therapists, social workers, and uh, two registrars, and uh, I'm the only psychiatrist in the team. Uh, in our current model, we have a four bedded uh, residential facility. It's not an inpatient unit. Uh, this is the facility where patients can come and stay, and we do a menu based uh, therapy to get intense psychological treatments. And we also have a larger uh, community program that provides uh, psychotherapy treatments and uh, secondary consultations. We undertake a workforce development and uh, we do some research and uh, we believe that uh, we are huge on uh, patient advocacy. We provide uh, about uh, 3,000 individual psychotherapy sessions uh, per year. 60 patients uh, per year access our uh, group psychotherapy treatments Normally based on uh, mentalization based approach, acceptance and community therapy approach, and uh, body mind therapies. And we have about 30, 35 uh, patient separations per year at our residential uh, services where we use uh, dietary behavior therapy and acceptance and community therapy treatment principles. See, these numbers might look big, but it's really a, a drop in the ocean. Right? Uh, in the secondary consultation uh, program, uh, we service about uh, 320 uh, patients uh, on an average every year. Our secondary consultation program provides uh, case-based uh, support, supervision, and incidental uh, training to clinicians. 
We assist with uh, case formulations, uh, risk assessments, uh, developing treatment plans, and focusing uh, transplants as the emotions which uh, clinicians experience. Uh, particularly the kind of things uh, which uh, Don was talking about very today. We provide uh, some family interventions, and we pro also provide services to forensic services and corrections. Uh, we work with uh, the, the camps, the youth population. I also provide uh, uh, psychiatric and second opinions. Our workforce development unit is uh, very active. Uh, uh, for example, last year we trained about 3,000 clinicians and we provide about 700 uh, training hours uh, per year. We target uh, psychiatrists, registrars, nurses, psychologists, occupational therapists, social workers, case managers, uh, and, uh, clinicians who work in the emergency department, CAT teams, and we also work with uh, uh, non-governmental organizations and uh, we provide education for families. Next. We also provide uh, uh, some fee-based training to interstate clinicians and services on request. As you can see in the list, the only state where we don't provide training is New South Wales, that's because uh, Bill Graney runs the, the project as well as here. When we look at the overall uh, spectrum outcome, uh, uh, it, when we take about one and a half to two years uh, to settle most of our uh, complex patients, uh, it doesn't seem to matter whether they have an individual psychotherapy or a group psychotherapy or a residential psychotherapy or a combination of various modalities, whether it is an acceptance and commitment therapy or a mentalization based therapy or a DBT approach, it doesn't seem to matter. Uh, initially, uh, I used to be very passionate about dietary behavior therapy. I thought that's the only treatment that works. But having uh, uh, worked at Spectrum in the last 10 years, it seems like whatever uh, therapies we do, as long as it is uh, specifically developed for bodily personal disorders, it seems to work. In our hands, about 80% 80, 80 of our patients go into remission in about two years of time. Next. Next slide. Okay, well, we have examined the 12 month uh, uh, outcome data for the spectrum group treatment uh, <coughs> programs. The findings are that uh, there are significant reduction in self harm acts, suicide, suicide attempts, reductions in anxiety, hopelessness, dissociation, and uh, there's uh, improvements in quality of life and increase in subjective well being. And most of these gains were maintained at the end of uh, one year. Okay, what progress we have made in Victoria in the last uh, 15 years? Now, several uh, area mental services now have started in the last couple of years. They have started to provide psychotherapeutic treatments, uh, DBT being the most popular, followed by acceptance and commitment therapy and mentalization based therapy. There is some cultural shift towards a less stigma. I'm not saying there is no stigma, but there is, a little, there is some reduction now. Uh, clinicians are now working hard to say that the bodily personality disorder is not a legitimate disorder deserving a mental health care. There is a bit more confidence in assessing and managing risks in treatment systems. Very rarely we see prolonged hospitalizations uh, in the patient units. If someone is admitted more than three or four weeks, certainly we will be called up of, uh, to, to be our assist. So things are changing, but a uh, long way to go uh, Several area mental services uh, have clinicians who now hold BPD uh, portfolios. In fact, uh, we're just about to organize a meeting, statewide meeting of all those clinicians who have a special interest in treating uh, moderate personality disorders. Now, private hospitals have also come on board and they run group psychotherapy programs and one of them even have as an inpatient uh, DBT program. So, uh, so BPD patients, uh, however, still have to compete with uh, other uh, patients for resources. There is still a lot of discrimination, rejection, and labeling. Mental staff are still inadequately trained in managing uh, BPD. Uh, most of them still uh, manage the patient rather than treating them. And very few uh, patients get uh, <coughs> BPD specific uh, psychotherapy. So what are the limitations of our current model? So we are highly critical of uh, our model. I think we have made some gains, 
but still we, we believe that we have a very, very long way to go. <coughs> so if you look at the returning population, of, which is about 6 million, and even going to the most, most conservative prevalence rates uh, of 1%, <coughs> we would potentially have 60,000 modern patients in the world. Our public hospitals probably manage, not rate, just manage, about 10% of them, which is 6,000 patients. And at Spectrum, we provide treatment for only about 60 or 70 people, and only about 400 people we assist in managing. So there's a long, long way to go. So most of the patients are, are if they are managed, they're managed in the primary sector, the uh, sector, non-governmental organizations, or private psychiatry and private psychology who assist to some extent. So there are uh, huge limitations in that sense. So access is a very, very, very big problem uh, for our patients in Victoria. So case management, so access to spectrum uh, becomes, uh, is difficult because of the barrier of uh, case management. So we are funded only to treat people who are already registered within the public mental systems. Which means if they can't really get through the doors of the public mental system, they can never access uh, spectrum. So we want to overcome that uh, barrier. Uh, there's also a huge gender bias. We only get women with borderline personality disorders. In the community, we know that uh, the significant number of men we also have borderline personality. That's again because of the, the different bias. And uh, again, most of the uh, interventions are reactive rather than proactive. And uh, given the fact that the most of the patients are managed outside of area mental services, nearly 54,000 people, so we want to look at how we can reach the, the larger populations. So we uh, looked at uh, two reports. One is the uh, target to uh, report, which was put out by Given Andrews. Um, we also looked at the uh, NHMRC guidelines. And the target to report uh, says that the current treatment, uh, which is about 15% coverage, uh, is often chaotic. This is nationally. And the ideal treatment would be, uh, should be at 30% coverage. 100% is perhaps uh, too idealistic and impractical, and which ranges from a step care approach from GP to specialist services, uh, and the costing has been worked out to be about 64 million for the entire country. Now, if you look at the NHMRC guidelines, the NHMRC guidelines next would uh, state that the uh, spectrum like services, the role of the specialized uh, BPD services, are to manage, treat people with the most complex. Uh, uh, body personality disorders, HSS, and to provide uh, consultation to primary care sector as well as the mental health services, and to provide education, training, supervision, support to rural and remote areas, and both to primary sector as well as to the mental health sector, and to take part in uh, health promotion and advocacy, work with families and carers, and uh, uh, to undertake research to develop mental treatment models. Next. So we uh, took inspiration from these two documents and uh, we are now really looking at a new model of care uh, for, uh, for HSS in Victoria. So the proposed spectrum model of care has several components. So we, uh, we want to follow the patient journey from prevention to early intervention to containment, stabilization, remission and recovery. And initially our main focus would be containment, stabilization and remission. And uh, we want to move our patients from just containment and stabilization towards remission and uh, recovery. And also to move patients from the elemental services to the pediatric sector, uh, private and the private sector. And uh, it will be guided by the HMRC guidelines and underpinned by uh, the workforce development uh, activities and research and evaluation. So that's our uh, uh, in the new proposed uh, model, we will have a BPD clinic which we have already started now. It's about three months since we started the, the new BPD clinic, which is a walk-in clinic where any patient in the state of Victoria can walk in with a two-line letter from a general practitioner. Wow. No, no, we want to open the gates. So we thought that, uh, so we would at least provide an assessment to start with. We are hoping that we would also provide outpatient psychotherapy. We also have a complex uh, clients clinic, which we already have, which we want to reshape it. And we are also dreaming and hoping to have a recovery clinic. 
And uh, we, uh, we, we currently we run uh, uh, time patient support, telephone support. We want to expand that and make it into a 24-hour telephone and online support for clinicians in Victoria, as well as the telephone line, telephone support for patients and uh, families. What our hope is that uh, in, in, from any emergency department in Victoria, the uh, clinician should be able to call us and at least get some help as to how to manage the patients uh, uh, 24-7. We, uh, we want to also uh, open up the access to public and uh, private systems and the primary care sector and the non-governmental organizations and clearly overcome the barrier of uh, the case management. Next. And we are, uh, so we are hoping that we, uh, we would have family care and education uh, programs in four places in Victoria, North, South, East, West, right through the year. And uh, we want to work with uh, uh, at-risk mothers, uh, particularly mothers with the body personal disorder, so that so we could prevent transgenerational uh, patterns. We want to expand our workforce development by going online and we want to improve our advocacy and uh, research. Okay, uh, now what's the good news? There is a lot of good news in the field of uh, personal disorders. We now have uh, clear evidence-based treatments that work for people with uh, body personal There is no doubt that treatments work. We have several treatments to choose from. And we know most persons with body and personal disorder uh, achieve symptomatic remission and very few people require uh, lifelong uh, treatments and prognosis for body personality disorder is much better than that for major psychotic disorders and mood disorders. See, I have uh, I used to work in, uh, I worked in public mental systems all my life. I initially worked with patients with schizophrenia and bipolar disorders. Now we exclusively work both in the private and public work with people with body personality disorder. And my job satisfaction has really been better. Because people with body personality disorder get well. And once they get well, they remain well. And what's more, we know that uh, it is cost effective to treat uh, people with HSS rather than not treating them. And in Australia, we have the, the national guidelines for body person, which I believe is probably the, the, the most latest guidelines in the world. And we have the consumers and carers actively advocating for uh, better care. One of the fine examples is the BPD awareness day organized by today's meeting, and which has been going on for the last three years. And the second example is the, the, uh, the establishment of the Australian uh, Body Personal Disorder Foundation. You will hear about it in the, the next few minutes. Now, what are the challenges which are facing us? There's still a lot of stigma around uh, bodily personal disorder. Uh, by the way, in my practice, I always apologize for the name bodily personal disorder. There's nothing bodily about it. There's no problem in the character of people who are, uh, the problems in uh, the character of people who suffer from this disorder. This is a mental illness like any other mental illness deserving the treatment. And there is also, the sector is uh, grossly, grossly under <laughs> so we have, so we have mental services that were set up for managing psychotic disorders and mood disorders. It's really not ideal for managing uh, bodily personal disorder. Our mental health workforce uh, was trained to manage psychotic disorders and mood disorders. Now, we, those skills are not very easily transferable to bodily personal disorder. Our clinical schools, colleges, and universities still have a long, long way to go, and they do not adequately train clinicians in body personal disorder. Uh, even the psychiatrists are not adequately trained in treating uh, these disorders. Now, uh, although we know that one person in the population suffers from body personal disorder, we don't know if all of them require, okay, if all, all of those people require evidence-based treatments such as genetic video therapy. Because if you are to do genetic behavior therapy, uh, for all Victorian body patients, we would require 480 million dollars. For the entire country, we need 1.76 billion dollars. But that's not feasible. So clearly, there are other ways of doing it. Maybe some patients require genetic behavior therapy. There may be other patients who, who require other kinds of therapies. So we need to do research 
and find out how one of the best can be. And also how we can achieve more permanent recovery, psychosocial recoveries. Okay, what do we need to do? We need to increase awareness, we need to influence and educate uh, policy makers and funding bodies using platforms uh, such as the Ali Industry, BPD Foundation, etc. Uh, one of our consumer, uh, consumer representatives on the board of the board of BPD Foundation, uh, Catherine Bennett, is undertaking a awareness walk. Uh, and she is going to walk from uh, Canberra to uh, Melbourne to raise awareness about body personal disorder. Wow. So events like this uh, like that should happen more and more. We need to look at how we can implement uh, the HMRC guidelines and uh, we need to advocate for uh, more extensive training. Uh, perhaps we need to look at a national training framework for body personal disorder and develop new models for managing <coughs> body personal disorder in the mental health services that would suit the Australian context. Next. A word about the Australian uh, BPD Foundation. It is going to be launched today, uh, uh, afternoon, towards the end of the program. And a group of consumers, <coughs> famous, uh, clinicians have uh, co-founded this foundation earlier this year. Uh, Jan McMahon, I think she is here, and she is the patron of the foundation. <coughs> and uh, uh, Julian McDonald is the chair, and she is also here. She's going to be talking to you later on. And uh, I, I was inspired by the American uh, care movement uh, headed by uh, Perry Hoffman. And uh, that has resulted in the National Education Alliance for Body Personal Disorder. They are a huge uh, lobby group uh, in, in America. They declared a few years ago, month of May, as the Body Personal Disorder Awareness Month. And they influenced the policy uh, and policy makers the funding bodies quite hugely. My dream is to bring all the consumers, carriers, and the clinicians, all of them, on one single platform and establish a body that can advocate for the welfare of uh, people with uh, HSS. And also support the traditions uh, who work for them and support the families and the carers. Our uh, mission, the mission of the BPD Foundation is to promote a positive culture to support the recovery journey of people with uh, body personal disorder and their families and carers. The foundation also supports clinicians, uh, healthcare personnel, and research, uh, researchers working in the field, and acknowledges everyone who works towards a better recognition for people. So please uh, join the foundation today. <laughs> Spectrum for every state. We have worked on that a modified, a much improved uh, spectrum like services for, the for every state in the country would just cost us $22 million. If only we could, uh, if every uh, citizen in the country could spend a dollar every year, we could have a modified spectrum for every single state. Thank you. Wow.